Hey Disco friends, this is Tatiana as always discovering and bringing to you the best of VR. The new VR MMORPG called Zenith is taking the VR gaming community by storm. The access to beta 2 build is now officially closed and the countdown to the official game release is on to January 27th. This game is a masterpiece combining social aspects of VR and actually doing quests together. Zenith gives you so much to do in the game and at the same time it is very much a social platform as well with a lot more purpose than VR chat, even though with some familiar oddities. Social VR is not for everyone, so developing a safe and comfortable platform is really important, and I think Zenith managed to achieve just that. Zenith is coming to all major platforms, PC VR, PS VR, and even standalone quests too. I tested the game on Quest 2 and fell in love with it. Check out my early gameplay review and first impressions in this video if you haven't already. How this game fit and runs so smoothly on a standalone quest is beyond me and that's why today we will compare the gameplay graphics of Zenith as it runs on Quest 2 and on Steam VR. As always, the purpose of this video is not to bash the Quest version. Standalone games always get downgraded graphics, but I want to show you what the developers had to do in order to make it run smoothly from the visual perspective. And is the difference really that drastic? If anything, this video is to praise the developers for doing this phenomenal job on bringing Zenith to Quest. Make sure to subscribe to DiscoVR if you haven't already to support this channel and if you're ready, let's go! First, let's make a quick look at the character creation page. Here are the major differences in the warrior outfit, which looks so much more cartoonish in Quest than it does in PC VR. Although I don't really know if I would even notice the different colors unless I put the images side by side, but you can definitely see it right here. On the other hand, the wizard outfit looks pretty much identical with very minor to no changes at all, which is pretty cool. The close-up looks show slightly improved shadows on the Steam VR version, but overall the characters are made to look like relatively low polygon cartoon characters, so I see no significant downgrading on the Quest version from original character design so far, and it's good to know. You might see some color changes here, but we'll talk about it more later. Now let's look at the beautiful world of Zenith. Please note that there's a day and night cycles in the game, so this is one reason why you can see the differences in color right now on the screen, the light pink tint in PC VR game. It was a bright and sunny day when I was recording on Quest 2, and it was already dusk when I played PC VR, and because Beta 2 was open for a very limited time, I had to record with the conditions I had. At first glance, the look and feel of the game on PC VR was surprisingly similar to the one on Quest 2. This is partially due to the fact that the game doesn't strive to be overly realistic and detailed. The game models here are quite simple, yet they deliver this bright and cheerful feel of the game. It might even look too cartoonish for some players who would maybe prefer darker and more sinister vibes, but I personally really enjoy the consistency of style and visual representation of the world on both game versions. I would say that most of the time what you see on Quest is exactly what you see on Steam VR when playing Zenith. I think this is important to me because the last time I compared PC VR and Quest graphics, which was when I played after the fall, we were often confused by the things that some of our team members could and could not see, like flashlight, posters on walls, and even character models were totally different in these game versions. But with Zenith, the game seems to be very consistent in its style and visual elements present in different versions of this game. Now to a bit more noticeable changes. Shadows don't seem to exist in the Quest version of Zenith. It's sad, but it's true. The game loses a lot of depth when compared to the Steam VR version because of the lack of shadows. Again, some people notice it right away, and for some people it takes a side-by-side -side comparison to realize what's missing. I also increased the grass density on my Steam VR game, and just look how full and lush the grass looks on PC VR when compared to Quest. Of course, the developers would sacrifice shadows and grass to make the game run on Quest. These are just visual effects that don't affect the game functionality, but save the resources enough to make the game run smoothly. You can also vividly see the polygon difference on the Quest version on Zenith compared to the smooth hair of the Zilfit's head on Steam VR. Nevertheless, different time of the day was not the only reason why the colors you see on the screen are somewhat different. Like I said, at first I thought that the major difference I could see in colors was because one was recorded during the day and another one in the evening in the game. But 
But at the same time, I couldn't help but notice how oversaturated the quest image was. Sure, night and day make difference here too, but seeing the darker complexion of Mika being portrayed as bright orange on quest 2 just didn't seem right. So when I opened the quest game during the night time, the oversaturation was still there. Just look at Brim, the chef, and the colors you can see here, and also on this cutting board and the orange in the cooking mode. I'm not sure why this oversaturation occurs, it doesn't seem to have any effect on reducing the resources, and this brightness is not nearly as pleasant as more muted and natural colors you see in PC VR. So this is something I noticed and I wonder if you will notice this too. Since we already touched on cooking, let's talk about it some more. I love cooking in Zenith. It doesn't always make sense, but it's fun and relaxing. Some small changes were made here to Quest version as well to make it easier on the system. Like when you're boiling milk on SteamVR platform, you can see milk taking this liquidy form in the pan, but on Quest it sort of looks like a ball, <laughs> even though it doesn't matter because when the milk is ready, it looks like a ball in both game versions. When you make cookies, frying flour is the most bizarre step, but whatever, just go with it. On SteamVR, it sort of looks like making a pancake or a patty. You flip it in the air occasionally so that it doesn't burn, and it looks pretty fun, but on Quest, yeah, it's a ball again. And it's more like playing tennis. Definitely feels less like cooking, but at least you can enjoy the same final result. Cheers! And a few more notes on the graphics. While standing on this little stone bridge, it's only in PC VR that I realized that it's actually a waterfall and not some kind of a lake. You can see the splashing water everywhere, while it's all pretty much static on Quest without any water movement. This is one of the most obvious changes that you can pinpoint right away when playing either of the game versions. And finally, I climbed on top of the highest mountain to check out the view and oh my goodness, this is so beautiful. It just made me realize once again how vast this world is and really if my stamina allowed me to, I could fly anywhere from this point and I would still find quests, chests, enemies and most probably other players. This was so exciting to see and I highly recommend climbing this mountain, the view is definitely worth it. And for the graphics comparison, the level of detail of the surroundings I could see on Steam VR was most striking here. And honestly, I don't even think you can see the difference in this video as much as you can while you're playing the game. In both versions, the view is stunning, but on PC VR, you can notice all the little details around you that become too small or pixelated on Quest. The top of this mountain was probably my favorite spot to compare the two game versions, and quite frankly, my favorite spot, period. You can also fly around from this top by aiming at these whirlwinds and flying even higher, like on this green island that allows you even more visibility. And with a little bit of practice, you can even make it all the way down to the bottom without breaking your neck. I hope you've enjoyed watching this video comparison. Please let me know what you think about the work that developers have done to bring Zenith to a standalone quest system. How much are you looking forward to playing this game? And which version will you be playing? Let me know in the comments and don't forget to subscribe to Disco VR for more fun and informative VR content. A huge shout out goes to my amazing patrons, you guys are the best! And if you also want to support Disco VR, you can do so by following the link in the description. This helps the channel so much. That's it, friends. Thank you. Thank you so much for watching and as always, happy VR discoveries!